The DeLorean Motor Company DMC was an American automobile manufacturer originally formed by automobile industry executive John DeLorean in 1975. It is remembered for the one model it produced the distinctive stainless steel DeLorean DMC 12 sports car featuring gull wing doors and for its brief and turbulent history, ending in receivership and bankruptcy in 1982. Near the end, in a desperate attempt to raise the funds his company needed to survive, John DeLorean was filmed appearing to accept money to take part in drug trafficking, but was subsequently acquitted of charges brought against him on the basis of entrapment. The DeLorean DMC 12 was memorably featured in the Back to the Future movie trilogy as the model of car made into a time machine by eccentric scientist Doc Brown, although the company had floundered before the first movie was made. In 1995, Liverpool-born mechanic Stephen Wynne started a separate company using the DeLorean Motor Company name and shortly thereafter acquired the remaining parts inventory and the stylized DMC logo trademark of DeLorean Motor Company. This current DeLorean Motor Company, located in Humble near Houston, Texas, is not, and has never been, associated with the original company, but supports owners of DeLorean cars. DMC Texas, as they are known, has an additional three authorized, franchised dealers in Orlando, Florida, Crystal Lake, Illinois, and Huntington Beach, California. History Beginning John DeLorean founded the DeLorean Motor Company in Detroit, Michigan on October 24, 1975. He was already well known in the automobile industry as a capable engineer, business innovator, and youngest person to become a General Motors GM executive. Investment capital came primarily in the form of business loans from the Bank of America and from the formation of partnerships and private investment from select parties, including The Tonight Show host Johnny Carson and entertainers Roy Clark and Sammy Davis Jr. Money was also gained later through a dealer investment program in which those dealerships offering DeLorean's cars for sale were made shareholders in the company. DeLorean also sought lucrative incentives from various government and economic organizations to pay for constructing the company's automobile manufacturing facilities. To gain these, he looked to build his first factory in a country or area where unemployment was particularly high. One candidate was Ireland, although the country's then Minister for Industry and Commerce, Desmond O'Malley, decided not to support the project. A deal in Puerto Rico was about to be agreed when DeLorean took up a last-minute offer from Northern Ireland's Industrial Development Board. Besides taking some early seed capital from Hollywood stars Sammy Davis Jr. and Johnny Carson, DeLorean Motor Company relied on the British government for about $120 million of its $200 million startup costs according to the newspaper The Times. The British government was very keen to create jobs in Northern Ireland to reduce sectarian violence by reducing unemployment. As part of this offer, DeLorean was apparently under the impression that the British government would provide his company with export credit financing. This would provide a loan of 80% of the wholesale cost of the vehicles $20,000 upon completion and delivery for shipping. Topic manufacturing facility In October 1978, construction of the six building, 660,000 feet squared 61,000 square meters manufacturing plant began in Northern Ireland and was designed and managed by Brodie and Hawthorne Architects based in Belfast and constructed in 16 months by Farrens McLaughlin and Harvey. Officially known as DMCL DeLorean Motor Cars, Ltd., the facility was located in Dunmurray, a suburb of Belfast. It was situated on an interface between two communities with differing political outlooks, Republican Twinbrick and Unionist Dunmurray. Unit production was scheduled to begin in 1979, but engineering delays and budget overruns caused the assembly lines to start only in early 1981. 
workers at the factory were generally inexperienced, many never had jobs before joining DMC. This may have contributed to the reported quality issues attributed to the early production vehicles and the subsequent establishment of Quality Assurance Centers located at various delivery locations. QACs were set up in California, New Jersey and Michigan where some of the quality issues were to be addressed and resolved before delivery to dealerships. Some of the issues related to the fitting of body panels, higher output alternators, and gullwing door adjustments. The combined efforts of quality assurance improvements at the factory and the post-production quality assurance done at the QACs were generally successful, although workmanship complaints would still occasionally arise. The 1981 DeLoreans were delivered with a 12-month, 12 12,000 miles, 19,000 kilometers warranty. By 1982, improvements in components and the more experienced workforce meant that production quality was vastly improved. Disputes between dealerships and customers arose later because many dealerships refused to do warranty work because they were not reimbursed. Vehicle <inaudible> 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 Topic DMC-12 reception by the car buying public and automotive magazines was mixed. Although the early vehicles had impressive waiting lists of anxious consumers, the MSRP sticker price of $25,000, this is equivalent to approximately $67,405 in 2017 was cost prohibitive for the majority of the market, especially for what many considered to be an underpowered and impractical plaything. It's not a barn burner, observed road and track, with a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 10.5 seconds. Frankly, that's not quick for a sports, GT car in this price category. The stainless steel body panels were an attractive design concept and impervious to corrosion, but in practice the sheen surface tended to show fingerprints. It also meant that the car could not be easily painted, every factory original DeLorean looked virtually identical. Some dealerships painted their cars on delivery to help make theirs more distinctive. DMC was testing the use of translucent paint to help provide different color options on the cars while also allowing the stainless steel grain to show through, but no cars were sold with factory painted body panels. The only factory option initially available was an automatic transmission. A gray interior was offered later in 1981 as an alternative to the standard black interior. Several accessories, including pinstriping and luggage racks, helped provide further individuality. In 1981, it was reported there were plans to make a four door version of the car, perhaps on a longer wheelbase, for 1983. It was to have been of stainless steel, and with gull wing doors. The car gained even more attention after it was featured in the popular 1985, 1989, and 1990 films in the Back to the Future movie trilogy. The car still attracts attention, as the film remains popular and the car plays such a pivotal role in the film. The car gained a considerable amount of attention in 2015, specifically October 21, 2015. The characters Marty McFly and Emmett Brown traveled into the future in Back to the Future Part II and ended up in 2015 on October 21. On the real October 21, 2015, the movie was celebrated all over the United States, and some other countries, and the date became known as Back to the Future Day. <laughs> Downturn and bankruptcy. The lack of demand, cost overruns, and unfavorable exchange rates began to take their toll on DMC's cash flow in late 1981. The company had estimated its break-even point to be between 10,000 and 12,000 units, but sales were only around 6,000. In response to the income shortfall, a restructuring plan was devised where a new DeLorean Motors Holding Company 
would be formed, which in turn would have become corporate parent to DMC and each of its subsidiaries, DeLorean Motor Cars Limited manufacturer, DeLorean Motor Cars of America distributor in the US, and DeLorean Research Partnership a research and development company. In January 1982, due to United States Securities and Exchange Commission questions about the company's viability, the company was forced to cancel the stock issue for the holding company that DeLorean had hoped would raise about $27 million. John DeLorean then lobbied the British government for aid, but was refused unless he was able to find a matching amount from other investors. What followed is a matter of debate between the British government, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Drug Enforcement Administration, DeLorean, his investors, and the U.S. court system. At some point in 1982, John DeLorean became the target of an FBI sting operation designed to arrest drug traffickers. He was arrested in October 1982 and charged with conspiring to smuggle $24 million worth of cocaine into the U.S. The key element of evidence for the prosecution was a videotape showing DeLorean discussing the drugs deal with undercover FBI agents Benedict Bent Tisa and West, although DeLorean's attorney Howard Weitzman successfully demonstrated to the court that he was coerced into participation in the deal by the agents who initially approached him as legitimate investors. He was acquitted of all charges, but his reputation was forever tarnished. After his trial and subsequent acquittal, DeLorean quipped, "'Would you buy a used car from me?' In the end, sufficient funds could not be raised to keep the company alive. DMC went bankrupt in 1982, taking with it 2,500 jobs and over $100 million in investments. The British government attempted to revive some usable remnants of the manufacturing facility without success, and the Dunmurray factory was closed. DeLorean himself retired in New Jersey, and the dream with which he had mesmerized Britain's Labour government, of industry rising out of the ashes of Northern Ireland's sectarian conflict, was shattered. He claimed that the DMCL was deliberately closed for political reasons, and at the time of closing was a solidly viable company with millions of dollars in the bank and two years of dealer orders on the books. Approximately 9,000 cars were made between January 1981 and December 1982, although actual production figures are unclear and estimates differ. Some of the cars manufactured in 1982, but not shipped to the States as the U.S. arm of DMC had no money to buy the cars from the factory in Northern Ireland, with 15XXX and 16XXX vehicle identification numbers are actually 1982 models that were given later van, dated 1983, by Consolidated International now known as Big Lots, a company that had a buyback program with DMC and had bought out the remaining unsold cars and also the inventory of unused parts left in the factory after the bankruptcy. Today A large number of the original cars are still on the road after over 30 years, most estimates put it at 6,500 cars surviving out of just over 9,000 built. There is an active enthusiast community around the cars, with strong owners clubs. A number of businesses were set up after the demise of DMC to provide parts and service, and most of those are still in existence. In particular, DMC based in Humble, Texas, operates under entirely new ownership and with no direct ties to the original DeLorean Motor Company. It purchased the parts surplus from Consolidated International and offers aftermarket parts to replace exhausted stock. Many aftermarket improvements have been offered over time to address some of the flaws in the original production cars, and to improve performance. A common opinion of the car is that in stock form it is somewhat underpowered, and a variety of solutions have been implemented, from complete engine swaps either to a larger PRV engine, or to completely different engines such as the Cadillac Northstar engine, turbocharger kits single or twin turbo, down to simpler solutions such as improved exhausts and other normal engine tuning work. 
Although he was cleared of all drug trafficking charges, John DeLorean still had to battle many legal cases stemming from the company's bankruptcy well into the 1990s. He declared bankruptcy in September 1999, and was evicted from his 434 acres 1.76 square kilometers New Jersey estate in March 2000. He died of stroke complications at 80 years of age on March 19, 2005. In August 2007, it emerged that due to demand for the DeLorean DMC-12, DMC-H would start selling refurbished cars. Businessman Stephen Wynne has purchased all the remaining parts for the car and builds them in Houston. Currently, a DeLorean can be assembled from the ground up using a combination of new, original and reproduction parts for $57,500 and still carry a 1980s title, while unrestored but good condition vehicles run from about $25,000 upwards. On December 3, 2009, DMC released a collection of T-shirts and hats in collaboration with streetwear brand The Hundreds, featuring modernized images of the DMC-12 in Los Angeles culture-based graphic designs. The collaboration project also includes a special edition DMC-12 painted in the hundreds recognizable Jags pattern in black and flat black which was for sale beginning 3 December 2009 and displayed at the hundreds flagship store in Los Angeles the entire day. In November 2010, in collaboration with DMC, Nike released a limited edition DeLorean Dunk shoe with an estimated production of 1,000 pairs at a suggested retail price of $90. In October 2017, DMC launched DMC Watches, which released two collections featuring design features from the DMC-12. In October 2011, DMC announced intentions to sell custom-made electric DeLoreans by 2013, which are still in development in part due to legal battles. In 2014, Sally Baldwin, the widow of John DeLorean, sued the unaffiliated Texas-based DMC for misuse of trademarks and images which were never purchased after the bankruptcy of the original company, claiming that they were still owned by his estate. On October 20, 2015, the lawsuit was settled out of court for an undisclosed sum in exchange for DMC having the rights to use the DeLorean Motor Company name, trademarks and logo. The production of the DMC-12 was due to be relaunched in 2017, with 300 new cars produced by DMC. However, as of April 2018, no complete cars have been produced, and a date of January 2019 proposed for the relaunch. See also List of defunct United States automobile manufacturers Logan Machine Company, the snowcat company that John DeLorean bought from Thiokol in 1978 List of car manufacturers of the United States List of car manufacturers of the United Kingdom